Hey, Apple Friday. This week, NVIDIA announced some of the wildest financial statements that I've ever seen come out of a technology company. Microsoft announced some really cool new things over at Build, and Samsung announced some really cool new OLED tech over at their conference. Welcome to the Friday Checkout. This video was sponsored by our streaming service, Nebula. Okay, this week we start the brief with Sony's strange new portable console codenamed Project Q. This portable device is used to stream games from a PlayStation 5, but it can only do so locally using remote play over Wi-Fi and not via the cloud or even from a different network. Kind of strange. Also, at the same event, Sony revealed that the PlayStation VR 2 has sold more than 600,000 units, or 8% more than the first generation PlayStation VR did in the same time period. That is good, I guess. And earlier in the week, the company also announced the Xperia 1 Mark V, their new flagship smartphone, which on top of the usual Sony highlights like a headphone jack, now also has a new nicely textured back, as well as a brand new camera sensor. Other new stuff this week was Amazon putting out its biggest tablet yet, the Fire Max 11, with a metal body and an 11-inch design, moving away from plastic for the first time. This will still be a simple device at just $230, but a lot of people like these for basic media consumption. Then, in a really impressive announcement this week, Adobe added its generative AI called Firefly right into the beta of Photoshop, so you can now use existing assets and tools in Photoshop, and you can then have AI add and change things from there, with users saying that the whole system seems to work really great. I actually can't wait to try this. Then, a company that did not have a great time this week was Meta. First, the company was fined $1.3 billion by the EU for supposedly illegally transferring EU user data into the US. The company is appealing, but simultaneously, this week, Meta also reportedly sold off Giphy for a $260 million loss to Shutterstock to comply with UK regulations, who said that they couldn't keep it. And one piece of maybe not terrible news for Meta is that the company might go and buy Magic Leap's chip and AR tech to better compete against Apple's soon-to-be-announced headset. Now, talking of Apple, that company has just announced this week that it will partner with Broadcom for chips made in the US, including 5G RF components, so probably things like RF filters. Apple is usually very quiet about its suppliers, but these being made in the US means that they just had to be highlighted, I guess. And still, with Apple, one of the company's three contract manufacturers for the iPhone, called Wistron, has apparently just quit, saying that they couldn't make any money from Apple due to them being the smallest supplier and Apple not being willing to negotiate. This means that Wistron just gave up and will sell their assembly unit in India to some other competitor. And finally, in the chip space, Micron was more or less banned in China by Beijing's security watchdog, which called it a national security risk, and so China's infrastructure operators and big companies are now not able to buy memory chips from the US company. Micron will lose some 10% of its sales based on previous performance, while South Korea's government said that they are okay with SK Hynix and Samsung filling the void, but of course China hopes that its domestic champions can pick up the slack instead. Last week I also told you about the weird and completely unexpected technology landscape of Syria as I just came back from a long trip across the Middle East, and I got a lot of comments asking me to explain what I did there and to talk more about the situation, so I'll talk about just that and also travel tech in general on this week's episode of the Friday Chillout, my podcast that is available to Nebula subscribers right now. Check it out at the link in the description. Okay, for my first story of the week, you know how Nvidia has been riding high on this giant wave of AI lately? Well, turns out the wave is much bigger than we expected and Nvidia is riding it much bigger than we expected as well, to a pretty crazy extent. So NVIDIA has just announced that, oops, instead of the already very generous $7.2 billion in revenue that people were expecting for their next quarter, they will instead likely do $11 billion. Surprise, 52% more revenue than everyone expected. That is basically completely unheard of for a company this size. Oh, and NVIDIA is also increasing its gross margins to an insane record 70%, meaning that they have record profitability on a record high revenues. 
If you don't look at financial statements a whole lot, then maybe these just seem like numbers to you, but the point is that they're insanely good numbers. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Leatherjacket Huang says that AI chips are of course one of the main drivers of this success, but just generally accelerated chips like the company's GPUs are also increasingly replacing generic CPUs across all data centers, even for non-AI workloads, so things are looking great for the company. NVIDIA's amazing news made their stock go absolutely bananas, adding almost $200 billion in market cap to the company overnight, and almost made NVIDIA the world's first trillion dollar chip company. Other AI-related chip companies like AMD also saw big bumps to their stock prices as the market expects them to participate in the boom as well. And interestingly, analysts like those from Societe Generale are showing that AI stocks are basically responsible for all the stock growth in the US market in the last year. Take those AI stocks out of the mix, and overall, the market would have actually shrunk this year instead of rising 8%. In other words, a lot of people with a lot of money are making the bet that the AI-based companies are going to capture the most value going forward. There's going to be a lot of fighting, and Nvidia is selling the most ammunition that is going to be used in this fight. Oh, and by the way, in the earnings call of Nvidia, gaming was mentioned seven times versus AI, which was mentioned 87 times. So yeah, these are clearly the priorities. Okay, and for my second story of the week, Samsung Display just had its big SID Display Week conference in Las Vegas and showed us a bunch of fascinating next generation OLED technologies. First is a new technology called Sensor OLED Display, which offers fingerprint, heart rate, and blood pressure sensing all built into the OLED itself without the need for a separate module by embedding a light sensing organic photodiode onto the panel itself. With this tech, we might see an entire phone screen because become unlockable using fingerprint, or we could see multi-finger authentication and maybe health data tracking as well. Second is something called Rollable Flex, which shows a phone-sized device expanding more than five times to become a huge tablet. This is a much bigger change than previous rolling devices, and Samsung says that it rolls and unrolls on an O-shaped axis like a scroll. Super cool. Also at the show was the Flex In and Out, which the company has shown off for a few years now, and it is a screen that can fold both ways. There was the Flex Hybrid, which combines both flexible and slidable technologies, and also the slidable Flex Solo, which extends from a 13-inch tablet to a 17-inch screen. All of this looks very tasty, and as a bonus, OLED Finder was also announced as a website where you can enter your phone name to see if it features Samsung OLED technology. That's a pretty good resource. It usually takes a few years for this new display tech to actually make it into real devices, but it's a good way of seeing what we could expect in the future. Okay, and for my third story of the week, Microsoft had its big developer conference this week called to Build with some really exciting new announcements. The little stuff includes that Windows 11 will finally get native support for compression types like RAR and TAR, so you can stop pirating WinRAR, I guess. The OS will also get proper support for Bluetooth low energy, and also a central way to manage RGB lights on your gaming accessories. The Windows Terminal will get GitHub's Copilot Chat AI built in, and the company also released Fluent 2, its big new design language update that it will support for not just Windows apps, but even for other platforms like the web and iOS and maybe even Android. But clearly, the headline news event of the week was Windows Copilot. This is Microsoft's AI assistant built right into the taskbar, so it is available across all apps like Cortana 2.0 or basically like a next-gen Siri or Google Assistant. You can of course chat with it like with any other assistant, but most interestingly, it can control Windows features directly. You can ask it to interact with third-party apps installed on Windows, such as Spotify that they used here in the demo, or you can ask it to perform actions on local files, like in this demo using a PDF file. One interesting detail is that Copilot can control third-party services through plugins like Adobe, Klarna, Kayak, and more because it uses the same plugins as ChatGPT, so Microsoft is hoping that this will become a true platform of sorts. Now, an AI assistant that can control your device and maybe even tap into a couple of third-party services is a pitch that I've heard before from Google, Samsung, Apple, and basically every other AI assistant company that has tried anything in the past, so this isn't like an entirely new idea, 
but maybe this implementation will be better and will blow us away. Now, if you're interested in what I was doing in and around Syria and you want to hear more about the technology landscape and all the experiences that we've had on the journey, I have a full summary of that up as a podcast that you could either watch or listen to right now. I discuss where we went, why we went, what technologies we encountered, some new thoughts on diving gear, eSIMs and more, and you can check that out right now over on Nebula by following the links in the description. The Friday Chill Out podcast is 100% funded by people like you who subscribe to us on Nebula and people like you have funded many, many creator projects on Nebula before. Nebula is our very own video streaming and podcasting platform that is built and co-owned by creators. And on top of getting our usual content to add free and usually early access, it also hosts tons and tons of high budget Nebula originals like my new favorite, the Underexposure series from Neo. Beside that, it also has a whole classes platform, including a dedicated class by yours truly and a whole lot more. Nebula for us as creators means independence, and for you as a viewer, it means more content, early access, no ads, no tracking, and so on. So check it out at the link in the description or at the little box that should appear on screen in a second, and I'll see you in the next video.